Everybody, welcome back to Wicked Good Sports. I'm Brian, and I'm joined by our resident hockey expert, a man who came to me and was like, Brian, I know you need a hockey guy because you don't know shit about hockey, Mr. Chris <laughs> Humanski. Chris, how are you? I'm good, Brian. Thanks for having me on. Hey, thank you for coming on and offering to talk hockey because we're from you know Massachusetts. Hockey is huge here, and I am someone who loves sports, casually likes hockey but really wants to like give people who are into hockey a place to you know hang out on youtube to listen and i think having you on will be great to expand the brand beyond just the nfl which like is my bread and butter so i'm excited to talk about the bruins especially because they're making some moves can you tell me a little bit about that so the we're recording this on wednesday the nhl trade deadline was two days ago and up until then, the Bruins hadn't really done much as far as making moves around the league. But um, Don Sweeney, the general manager, was able to make a pretty significant move in trading a, sec a second-round pick and Anders Bjork for some help on the offense with, from uh, Taylor Hall from the Buffalo Sabres. So this is a huge move, it's fair to say. Like, For the Bruins, yes. Yeah. He was a uh, first overall pick in the draft in 2010. If I... 2010, which 2010, one of the best draft classes in recent NHL history. And he is a former MVP. And just like what I know people have been saying that he was having a down year this year, but what do you think he can bring to the Bruins, and how do you see this trade playing out for them in the short term and then possibly, I guess, long term? I know his contract's going to expire, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I definitely think that Taylor Hall is going to bring a lot of short-term help to the Bruins. He's already indicated that he wants to stick around for a while, but we'll have him for, the, for at least the next couple of years, we're hoping. Um... The offense this year for the Bruins has been slower than usual. We have that amazing first line, Brad Marchand, Patrice Bergeron, and David Pasternak, but everything below that has just the production hasn't been there. So bringing on a forward like Taylor Hall, who's been an, who's been an absolute standout with the Buffalo Sabres, um, is going to be significant. Yeah, no, and I mean, really Im improve the Bruins. Yeah, I mean, no doubt on that, and just, like, an exciting time. I mean, the Bruins have been a very competitive team. I mean, they were in the, the finals, like, what, two years ago? Like, um, yeah. I, And one of the big things about, like, Boston sports in general is just there's not a lot of sympathy for mediocrity or worse. So, like, you got to love that they're going for it and they're, they're adding players and they're, you know, looking toward the future and in the short term looking to make a push this year i guess do you think this makes them a legit contender for a title this year i don't know i don't know if we're a legit contender for a title yet but definitely in the playoff conversation i think right now we're swimming middle of the pack in our division the nhl is going through a lot of weird stuff this year we got new divisions because right all the canadian teams are playing in their own division now mm -hmm. So we're not seeing a lot of our usual our usual rivals that we usually do pretty well against in the Canadian teams in Toronto and Montreal. So we've had a bit of a we've had a bit of a challenge trying to stand out in the division. Mm -hmm. But with this move adding Taylor Hall and getting a defenseman from the from the Senators Mike Riley where the Bruins have desperately needed help all season. Um it's going to make a difference. It's going to hopefully catapult that team into into a playoff spot down the road. Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's definitely a lot of excitement around the moves they've been making um, so far. We'll see what happens. I mean, like you said, we haven't been able to beat up on our rivals. No shade to, to the Canadian teams, of course. Yeah, plenty, but... plenty of shade for that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's fine. But I guess let's take a step from the hypothetical championship uh, for Bruins and talk about a local team that actually won the championship. The UMass Minutemen are the, uh, I was at NHL national championships are the hockey national champions. Chris, what in is the NCAA? Yes. Yeah, so the NCAA. 
what does this mean for UMass, I guess, as a program and just like, you know, hockey in Massachusetts in general? What, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, college hockey in Massachusetts is a bit is a big deal for hockey fans. We have a very there's a very famous tournament that happens every year the bean, in Boston, the Bean Pot. Um, all the best college hockey teams we were having this discussion earlier are all based around Massachusetts and that hockey East Division. But when you think of college athletics, you usually don't think about the University of Massachusetts in really any respect, except for maybe UMass Lowell. UMass Lowell is a couple of good teams up there, mm -hmm. but. As far as Amherst, it is a big deal for UMass to bring home that national title because in any sport, UMass just hasn't produced. They haven't been able to bring something home for the for those Minutemen alumni, for for all for all the kids that are playing on those teams now, and they're going to get a lot more exposure from those profession for those professional teams who are going to start drafting players out of the University of Massachusetts, and it's going to be so big for that school to start having something to brag about in their athletic program. Yeah. And for, for anyone who's listening, who's not from Massachusetts, the state of UMass athletics is like, if UMass men's basketball makes the NIT, we're like, Hey, hell yeah, that's, that's something. And uh, I'm pretty sure like the most notable football player in like the last 20 years is Victor Cruz, who is way better in the pros than he was like at UMass somehow. So like, uh, this is something very much needed. UMass, um, Amherst especially is definitely more known as a party school, I would say. As I say, yeah, if you want, if, when you go to school, if you want to party, you go to Amherst. If you want to play sports, you go to Lowell. Right. So, like, I'm sure the parties were pretty wild. Yeah, hopefully I'll COVID safe and all that, you know. I won't, I won't go there, of course. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a huge deal for uh, the UMass hockey program. And we wanted to bring it up because, hey, this is our first hockey video on the channel. And I feel like we'd be doing a great disservice to uh, the team not bringing them up. Absolutely. So congrats to the UMass Minutemen on that, on that championship. Yes, congratulations. All right, Chris, is there anything else we should talk about before we get on out of here on this segment? Again, it's called Power Play. It's what you're going to see on YouTube, the Power Play playlist coming very soon. Well, a couple of things that just broke in the last couple of minutes having to do with the Bruins goalies. I guess as a part of that Taylor Hall deal, the Sabres asked – for one of the Bruins' two rookie goalies that they've got going, okay. in, uh, Dan Vladar and Jeremy Swayman, who, in the absence of Tuka Rask and Yaro Halak, the number one and number two mm -hmm. goalies, they've, they've been stepping it up. They've been impressive. I'm glad to see that the Bruins are holding on to them for at least a little while, and hopefully when Tuka Rask comes back tomorrow, he's going to look better <laughs> than, he, than, right, than, he's right. looked all, than he's looked all year. Oh, he has to now, right? He, that he knows that the right. franchise is committed to people who are looking to take his job. So we'll, we'll <laughs> see what happens there. Um, obviously, you know, Tuka's a big deal here. He, he's he's fairly beloved, I'd say. I don't know if that's inaccurate as, as a more casual fan. I know he definitely has his loud detractors. Where do you uh, stand on Tuka? Where I stand, um, up until recently, I was a fan of Tuka Rask. I feel like in the last couple of years... He's seen a decline. He's, mm. I like to say, he's kind of a head case. Um, <laughs> his, he's not all. He's not always mentally there. When he's there, then he's one of the elite goalies in the league. Mm. But when he's not there, it's just not good. And he's, I think Tuka time is just about done in Boston. He's a free agent after this year. I think it's time to move on. Yeah, I think it's tough. It is a tough sell, especially given that he left um, the bubble last season during the playoffs, which is. A tough spot to put your team into on like a short notice so there, there probably is still lingering friction between him and the organize, organization based on that move so like like you said we could probably see the end of uh Tukaras in boston so but hey that's why we kept the rookie goalies right that's right all right well if that is it chris where can they find you online if they want to follow you so if you're into dank memes you can find me on facebook um, if you if you want to read about you know the Bruins, uh, the Chicago Cubs, I'm a Chicago Cubs fan too for baseball. Um, if you wanted that that kind of stuff, you can find me on Twitter, Chris underscore Uminski, right. and that is that's how you'll hear from me. Yeah, and if you 
are more interested in hearing from Chris. He's part of our Among Us group every Thursday on our Twitch and main YouTube channel, youtube.com slash wicked get everything, twitch.tv slash wicked get everything. Ben is hosting uh, Among Us games. They're a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, so check us out there and nothing else. Want to watch me die? Definitely watch those. Yeah. Or, or if you want to watch me aimlessly wander around a new map that I have no idea how to do anything on, that is the place to do it. So yeah, uh, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you in the next Power Play, and I'll see you in the next segment where I think we'll be talking about Julian having to retire. Another, another big thing happening in Boston sports. It's just, it's all happening right now, Chris. Thank you so much for coming on. Take it easy, Brian. Have a good night. You too.